Hello, uh, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me start thanking the organizers for inviting me to, to this event. Unfortunately, I could not make it to come to Minneapolis uh, in person. Uh, I hope uh, we will have uh, other occasions in the, in the near future. So let's go to the talk. From bits to meanings, a possible way to, towards uh, generative semantic communications. So a quick uh, uh, summary, where it all began more than 25 years ago, <laughs> the collaboration uh, with the Orgos on communication problems. And then what's next? How to move from uh, symbolic, uh, let me say, communications to semantic communications. I will mention the, some fundamental tools, uh, and then I will move to the main uh, uh, theme of this talk, which is about the use of generative models for semantic communications. So where it all began 25 years ago with Yorgos and Anna Scaglione, we, we were involved into the, the problem of optimizing the, the design of uh, linear precoders and decoders given a, a block channel matrix H and we achieved the results, which were also well perceived by the, the, the community, and we enjoyed working together. It was my beginning of working into communication problems. But now uh, let's move. So uh, how, how can we move from symbols to, to meanings? So instead of inventing the wheel, again, let me quote uh, Warren Weaver words, we were was uh, Shannon uh, colleagues, colleague, and he said that the broad subject of communication can be organized into three levels, essentially. Uh, level A, the technical problem, where we are concerned about bits, and we want to make sure that we, if we transmit bits through a noisy channel, we are able to recover those bits in a reliable and accurate way at the uh, receiver side. And then we have the semantic problem, where uh, rather than being concerned with bits themselves, we, we are concerned with the meaning conveyed by those bits. And finally, we have the effectiveness problem in uh, Weaver's words, where we, there is a clear goal of the communication, why these two entities communicate with each other, probably because they have a common goal to, to achieve, to fulfill. And then the question becomes, uh, how much the meaning conveyed to the destination helped these two entities to achieve the common goal. So Shannon focused deliberately on the, on the technical uh, problem uh, itself. And then uh, he, he left aside all aspects related to semantics and effectiveness. Maybe it's time with the 6G AI native networks to incorporate uh, semantic aspects into the network design. Now, uh, in a pictorial way, we have the, the technical uh, level at the bottom and the semantic uh, level on top. Now, the, the point is the following. We have a source that wants to convey some meaning that he has in his mind, for example, to the destination. Then to communicate, uh, he needs to represent this meaning using symbols. Typically, we use bits. But then at the receiver side, at the semantic level, what is really necessary is to recover a meaning, W prime, which is possibly equal to W. What is the novelty? The novelty is that even if we recover a sequence of bits, X prime, that are totally different from X, but as far as X prime is semantically equivalent to X, the system is error-free at the semantic level. So you can understand that from this point of view, we have many more additional degrees of freedom because we are not uh, uh, constrained to make sure that X prime has to be equal to X, but only that the meaning uh, W prime is equal to the original meaning. Uh, the other point that is uh, important to, to convey here is that the amount of uh, data that needs to be transmitted depends on the shared knowledge between transmitter and receiver. This actually essentially in all communication, even now, I'm speaking to you, uh, an audience uh, with a lot of people very knowledgeable in signal processing, communications, networking, etc. 
And uh, so I'm taking advantage of your knowledge. If I will have to, to deliver the same talk to a person taking at random in the street, I will say, I will need to say many more words because probably they, they know less. This is another important point that is uh, important to make and possibly to, to formulate in mathematical terms. Now, a, a few driving principles, knowledge representation over topological spaces, uh, the semantic information bottleneck, and generative AI models for wireless communications. I will not spend much time on knowledge representation because of time limits, but the essential point is that uh, it is important to represent uh, the data over a topological space, possibly a graph or a circumplex, a simplicial complex, whatever, because in these spaces, uh, we, are, we can use the tools from uh, algebraic uh, topology to extract invariants. And invariants are associated to meanings. In, uh, in, in a few words, we can say that the meaning is associated to an equivalence class. Uh, each equivalence class is composed by all those sequences of bits that are interpreted in, in the same way uh, to extract semantics. Now, the second important point is the information bottleneck principle, where we have data X to transmit, and we want to find the probabilistic precoder phi in such a way that when we uh, use U, the encoded data, we are able to uh, recover um, uh, the decision variables Y. So Y is not necessarily coincident with X. This is an important point. And the encoder is designed in order to maximize a linear combination between uh, uh, the relevant information, the mutual information between U and Y, which says how much U is relevant to recover Y, minus beta, the complexity, which measures how many bits are necessary to encode X using U. Now, how can we incorporate this principle into a communication system? Suppose we start from an image or a video X, whatever, then we start extracting features from this image. And then we use the information bottleneck principle because we don't necessarily have to recover X. We want to recover some decision variable Y. We, see what it, we will see what it is. Then we transmit this data through a channel. At the, the, at the receiver side, we need to recover data that uh, have to be used uh, to trigger a generative model able to generate uh, an image X prime that hopefully should be uh, semantically equivalent to the transmitted one. So in, in this new context, of course, the, the performance of the system cannot be uh, measured by mean square error or, or bit error rate because they are only valid at the bit level. So we need to, uh, use some uh, key performance indicator that works at the semantic level. In the computer vision community, it is quite common to use, for example, the so-called uh, Frechet inception distance, which measures the distance between the original image and the reconstructed one. And it works like this. It's like you, you train a neural network uh, with uh, a given uh, objective function, for example, uh, classification accuracy. And then you use this vector to extract the latent variables resulting from uh, an input given by the original image or the reconstructed one. Then you measure the distance between the two latent spaces in this way, which is like uh, the distance between two Gaussian multivariate uh, probability density functions. And this is a way to measure the distance, uh, which is invariant to translation, uh, rotation, scaling, etc. So in a way, it measures uh, uh, semantic distance. Now, uh, uh, a very simple example of this idea is to use a variational autoencoder. The first part is used at the uh, transmitter side. We, so we encode an image into a certain number of parameters. We transmit these parameters and we generate an image at the, at the receiver side. So let's see what happens in terms of the goal of communication. So in this case, the goal was classification. Where we send these images, here we plot the classification accuracy in terms of the dimension of the latent vector. So you can see that uh, 
transmitting uh, either uh, you know handwritten digit the, the NIST data set or uh, images like in the CIFAR 10 uh, uh, image data set we can achieve uh, fairly good uh, classification accuracies even transmitted uh, transmitting a very low uh, number of bits but now let's uh, become more sophisticated than just a variational loud encoder. So the basic idea that I want to promote is this. We want to represent knowledge in a hierarchical structure and use AI generative models conditioned to the information that we are able to convey uh, through the channel. Depending on the channel capacity, we transmit more or less data. And depending on the data that we have at the receiver side, we generate something more or less sophisticated. So let's see how it works. So the first case, we transmit at the very low data rate mode. How? We start from an image here, and then we just extract a segmentation map of this image, where we identify a number of semantically relevant objects, pedestrians, cars, traffic lights, etc. And we only transmit the segmentation map to the, to the receiver. At the receiver side, we run a denoising diffusion probabilistic model conditioned to the segmentation map. And this is the result. So as you can see here, sorry if the two images are maybe too small. But anyways, if you compare these two images, they are totally different. This car is different from this one, but they have exactly the same shape because the shape is what has been conveyed through the segmentation map. So why do we do this? If the goal of communication is, for example, estimating the depth of the semantically relevant object in the, the 2D image, let's see what happens using this communication model. Here we plot the accuracy in the estimation of the depth of each object uh, in the presence of noise as a function of the peak signal to noise ratio. And we compared our method with a bunch of alternative methods. And you can see that our method can achieve better results in terms of accuracy. But of course, it is very simple because we transmitted something that is only the segmentation map and the resulting image at the receiver side can be also totally different if you look at them from the original one. Now. Suppose that now we really want to reconstruct the image, and then we want to run an image classification task on the reconstructed image at the receiver side. So what we do here, we transmit at the medium data rate, where we, we transmit the segmentation map plus a coarse resolution image. We, we send these two flows of information through the channel. At the receiver, we run the denoising diffusion probabilistic model again, but this time conditioned to the segmentation map here, and then conditioned to the coarse resolution image as well. Let's see what we achieve. This is the result, and we are comparing our method with the state of the art in image coding, which is BPG. And now if you look at these two images, I would say that actually BPG is better than our coding because the, the cars appear to be uh, better focused, for example. But if we pay more attention to what happens in the far distance from the viewer, you can see that now uh, in the far distance, we have a car here, which is better visible than here. We have a cyclist here that again is it's more visible than here, but most important, we can see a pedestrian here, which is not visible at, at all here. So why does this happen? Because in this case, the image was generated, taking into account the segmentation map that uh, contains all this information. Now, if we plot the results here in terms of uh, segmentation quality and in terms of uh, classification accuracy, we can see that in terms of classification accuracy, we can do much better than uh, the state-of-the-art uh, image coding system, because for the same accuracy, we can achieve a much lower bit per pixel. Uh, if we proceed, if uh, uh, we are not uh, happy with what we have, and we want to reconstruct something that in specific points, for example, traffic lights, we want to have uh, bit by bit equality, then we can run something like this, where we use the model also at the transmitter side, 
we generate a, a residual, the difference between the original and the encoded one, and we transmit three flows of data, uh, the segmentation map, the course resolution image, and the residual. And at the receiver side, we use them. So as an example, this is the residual. And using the residual, we are able to reconstruct exactly, for example, the traffic lights, whatever we deem it is really important to reconstruct even at the bit level. So essentially that's all. Uh, I'm sorry no, not to be there to take questions, but if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me at this email. Thanks a lot. And I hope to see you in the near future. Enjoy the rest of the events.